When everyone knows you're a YouTube journalist who covers, among other things, electric cars, everyone from close family through to casual acquaintances, and even people you've only met once in the supermarket, will reach out from time to time with a news story that they want you to know about. Usually the stories they're sharing are ones I'm already aware of or in the process of chasing more information about. Sometimes they're really obscure, interesting stories I've not yet encountered. And sometimes they're stories I simply can't cover because they don't pass basic fact checking. Combine all of these friendly tip offs with many of you who reach out to me via Twitter and YouTube, and it helps me figure out which stories are important to you and which ones I should focus on in any given week. Today involves one such story. The seemingly spontaneous fire which broke out this weekend on the underside of a Tesla Model S belonging to British film director Michael Morris. Morris, who was driving through Los Angeles with his wife and actress Mary McCormack, was alerted by some passers-by to flames coming from the underside of his luxury plug-in car. After McCormack and Morris escaped the car, McCormack shared video of her husband's Tesla on the side of the road on Twitter. As you might expect, the video has got a lot of attention in the last 24 hours. But those who aren't fans of electric cars have used the video to argue that electric cars or even just Tesla electric cars aren't safe and should be banned, while others have used it to illustrate how much unfair coverage Tesla is given by the press and how they shouldn't be trusted because they're clearly eager to see electric cars and Tesla killed forever. So, in the interest of calming down all of the emotions and the arguments flying around, it's time to sit back and discuss some basic facts about electric car fires and vehicle fires in general. And because I want to do a good job, today's video is going to be a little longer than normal. First up, let's deal with some statistics. The US National Fire Protection Association has been recording all reported vehicle fires for the past 37 years in the US. This includes motorcycles, buses, cars, trucks, and trailers. And while it only has published figures up to 2015 on its website, because there's a delay on releasing those figures, it shows that today vehicles are far safer and far less likely to catch fire than they were 37 years ago. And we're talking about all car fires, including all fuel types. In 2015, the US Federal Highway Administration reports that there were 263 million vehicles registered on the roads of the US, while the NFPA reports there were 174,000 vehicle fires, resulting in $1.2 billion worth of damage, 1,550 injuries, and 445 deaths. So, very roughly, because I'm rounding, we're looking at about one vehicle fire for every 1,511 vehicles on the road in 2015 in the US. OK, we need to go somewhere else for fire statistics of EVs versus internal combustion engine vehicles because the data I've used just doesn't break down. So we're off to Sweden now, where a 2014 study by the Research Institutes of Sweden and Chalmers University of Technology concluded that Tesla electric cars have a fire rate of about one in every 20,000 vehicles, which is far better than the one in 1,000 fires it noted for ICE vehicles. Now, obviously, there's some discrepancy between the second study and the first data set I've quoted when it comes to how many vehicles for each car fire. The Swedish report is lower than the US one, but that's most likely because we're talking all vehicle fires in the first and all internal combustion engine car fires in the second, including incidents of arson. But but with all this in mind, we're still at a pretty obvious conclusion. Electric cars catch fire less frequently than internal combustion engine vehicles. And that's hardly a surprise if we look at the number of moving parts, which all wear, in an internal combustion engine vehicle versus an electric car. Internal combustion engine vehicles give off a lot of waste heat. This heat not only means any fuel leaking from the fuel lines in the engine bay has the potential to ignite, but it means that electrical wiring inside the engine bay is subjected to extremes of heat that can and does cause the insulation on the wiring to crack or melt, which again can cause a fire if there's a short. At this point, I'm sure someone will scream, aha, electrical fires, EVs have electrics, and you'd be right, they do. But because electric cars are generally far cooler inside their engine bay, it's nigh on impossible to see low voltage wiring cause a firing unless there's a circuit inside the vehicle that is damaged or badly designed. Or there's been animals nesting in the car, which sadly does happen as electric cars are quiet and in the Goldilocks zone for critters wanting to nest, not too hot and not too cold. 
But I digress. Even in the case of electric car fires where the vehicle is charging, the fire itself is normally traced back to a faulty charging station or a poor connection between the building electrical socket the vehicle is plugged into and the charging unit. On to batteries. Batteries do carry a lot of energy. That energy can be released as heat. And as I'm sure those of you who've watched the Samsung phone fires of recent years and heard about the various airline bans on lithium-ion battery packs in the air will know, lithium-ion batteries can enter into a thermal runaway situation where the battery cells suffer internal electrical shorts, overheat and burst into flames. And some batteries can be forced to short and catch fire if they're punctured in the right way. Although as many videos online demonstrate, it really is quite hard to puncture automotive grade lithium ion batteries and start an instant fire because of the way they're made. Instead, it's more likely that puncturing a cell will cause a fire long after the puncturing, which is hard because electric car battery cells aren't generally left unprotected against the outside world. They live in a specially designed battery pack with plenty of shielding to protect them. Also, electric car battery packs aren't the same kind of low-cost, low-quality battery packs you'd find in children's toys from China or from cell phones. For a start, they're designed with much longer use case scenarios in mind, both in terms of how slowly they discharge and their battery lifespan. Additionally, they have sophisticated onboard battery management systems whose job it is to help keep them healthy and safe thus keeping you safe as well. If that's not enough to keep the battery happy, some car companies even build special gels and foams into electric vehicle battery packs. These are designed to expand when the battery pack catches fire, isolating the battery pack from electrical shorts and excess heat within the pack. Lithium-ion battery chemistries are far more volatile than some would like, which is one of the reasons why researchers are so interested into other chemistries. As battery chemistry becomes more advanced, the hope is that batteries will also become more durable and safe too. So we're at a point now where I hope you'll be feeling more comfortable knowing that electric car battery fires are far less common than they are for internal combustion engine vehicles. Indeed, you're more likely to see an electric car catch fire following a major collision, sometimes a few days or hours after, than you are to see one spontaneously combust as this weekend's video shows. Which brings us full circle to that incident. What caused it? Well, it is too early to say, and Tesla is working with investigators to find the cause. If I had to guess, it would be a super rare electrical short caused by a fault in the vehicle's battery pack. That might be either a faulty discrete component, a battery management system error, or perhaps even a faulty battery cell. Either way, this fire does appear to be rare. Does it mean that we shouldn't cover it? Well, that's a toughie. It's got attention partly because of who the owner of the car is. If it belonged to John Doe of Connecticut, I doubt it will have received so much attention so quickly. How can it be handled? Well, I hope this video has helped educate and I hope Tesla explores the cause thoroughly just as any automaker would do with an unexpected fire in an internal combustion engine vehicle. That's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. And if you want to help us make more of these videos, consider using one of the links below to make a donation or by buying something from the Transport Evolved shop. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep evolving.